Hi guys, today I'll be taking a look at a clicky switch that frankly shouldn't exist in my opinion. The NK Shabet. Let's get started. Now, before I get to the switches themselves, yes, I am aware I'm saying Shabet wrong. Leave a dislike if you wish, but to my defense after reading this thing here, I'm even more confused. So is it Shabet, Shabet, or Sobet, or is it any of those, doesn't matter, it's a stupid dessert name anyway. Now, as for the switches themselves, they are clicky, but they use a click bar, not a click jacket, making these one of the very few switches that isn't a box click bar switch, like box white for example. Additionally, these switches were made in collaboration with Novel Keys and Kaiwa, hence the NK in the name. As for the Sherbet or whatever, I have no idea. Now, in terms of pricing, these go for around £6 for 10 switches on AliExpress, placing them firmly in the mid-tier price bracket. And this is what they look like when disassembled. Feel free to pause the video. Now, let's move on to the switch categories. On center key presses are of a mixed bag, they're mostly okay but there are enough switches in my batch that bind a decent amount resulting in an inconsistent feel. Off center key presses are basically the same but those inconsistencies are further amplified. Overall I'd say these are okay, not outright terrible but I'd still choose the box whites over these. 5 out of 10. Now, according to Kaiwa, these switches have an actuation force of 65 grams at 2 mm, a peak tactile force of 80 grams, and a total travel of 4 mm. So, it's certainly not a light switch by any metric, in fact, it's heavier than the Cherry MX Blues and the Box Whites. They're quite similar in weighting to the Cherry MX Greens or Gate Run Greens, although these are so much more tactile than those. However, despite it being a switch that seemed to cater towards me, I'm not a big fan of how inconsistent the weighting is, especially when typing at speed. The constant binding makes it very frustrating to use. Overall, on pure spring weighting, these are great switches, but that's all ruined by how inconsistent these are when in use. 6 out of 10. Now, as a click bar switch, they do sound crisper and overall just better than click jacket switches. However, they do sound a touch rougher compared to the box whites, possibly due to their binding and inconsistencies. Moreover, the switch is ping, but it isn't exactly noticeable unless you've got your ears against the keyboard. Plus, there is a faint clicking sound before actuation coming from my P key. Perhaps it's a quality control issue. Take a listen. Overall, as far as click bar switches go, this isn't too bad, but it's not my favourite either. I still prefer the sound of box whites. 6 out of 10. Now, take a listen and enjoy. Now, our typing performance, not great. These are scratchy and inconsistent. In fact, at one point, I managed to achieve 91 words per minute on monkeytype.com, but at my next attempt, I only managed 64, which is such a huge gap. Now, aside from typing tests, they also suck for everyday typing. The constant binding means I have to reach for my backspace key more often than I'd like. Plus, some keys actuate before the click, making them quite unreliable. So yes, it does have box switches issues as well, unfortunately. I guess the only good thing about these switches is at least they seem pretty good when working as intended when you don't feel any of the faults. Overall though, there are better options out there like box whites or box pinks. 5 out of 10. 
Now for gaming, you can forget about it. These are too loud, too scratchy, and too bindy. This is especially true with slower paced games like stealth games, and it's even worse if you wear open back headphones like I do. Additionally, this issue is similar to fast paced games as well like Team Fortress 2, but slightly reduced. It is still annoying though. Overall, I wouldn't use this for gaming, even for fast paced games. It's just not worth the pain and frustration, at least for me anyway. 4 out of 10. In conclusion, it has bits and pieces of highlights, but for the most part, it's a Switch that should never have existed in my opinion. There's little to no reason for it. The final score for this Switch is 26 out of 50 or 52%. Not exactly amazing even compared to its click jacket competitors. And that's the end of the review and next time I'll be taking a look at a unique tactile Switch. Until then, take care and goodbye.